I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me. The pains of hell got hold upon me. And I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay, pay my vows unto the Lord now. In the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his saints. O Lord. Truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant. And the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Now. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of the old Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. The Lord will bless his own inspired and fallible word. Our Father, we thank thee for your presence with us already. And we thank thee for the beautiful ministry of our young brother tonight. It just blessed our souls. And we ask, Lord, that if you tarry, that you'll give him many years. And you'll use them for the extension of your kingdom. As we turn to your word now, Lord. Edify the saints. Multiply the church. Above all, glorify thy name. For Christ's sake. Amen. I want to speak for a little while tonight on being thankful. Brothers and sisters, are we really thankful for what the Lord has delivered us from? C can we say with grateful hearts, with gratitude in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation. So rich, so free. You see, this psalm is a beautiful psalm of thanksgiving. It really breaks into four, if I was going to take it in a Bible reading tonight. It really breaks into four because we have great David's gratitude. He's so thankful. I love the Lord. And then we have his grief. He was brought low. And then we have his goals. He has a goal in life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And then we have his gladness. We can't read it without being moved to count our blessings. This psalm pictures a man desperately in love with the Lord. Verse 1. You'll have your Bibles with you. Verse 1. I love the Lord. But then every child of God should say that without hesitation. I love the Lord. Of course, this was the requirement of the law. We're speaking about the Psalms now. This was the requirement, love the Lord with all life. This was the requirement of the law. But it only can be produced in a person redeemed by the grace of God. After all, how can a person prove that he's saved by the grace of God? Only by the life he lives and the love he has. Didn't our Lord Jesus say, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples? If you have love one to another. Didn't it say too here, John says, we know, speaking about salvation, we know we have passed from death unto life. Imagine, we know we have passed from death because we love the brethren. But what a way to begin a psalm. Verse 1, I love the Lord. Surely it's a good way to begin a new job, a new school, a new day, a new anything. A bold confession of our love for God. Surely it will determine what comes next. After all, we have, we have nailed our, our colors, as it were, to the mask. Oh, listen, friends. I love the Lord. Watch it. Because. Because. Our love is always like that. It's, it's a consequent love. There's consequences to our love. Because. John 
John says in 1 John 4 or 19, I think it is, John says, and, and John ought to know because he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. And John says, we, we love him because he first loved us. You see, brothers and sisters, God's love's quite the opposite. I want to get this in your heart tonight. After 50 years of God's saving grace and reading the Bible, I want you to get this in your heart tonight. God's love's quite the opposite from our love. God's love is not a consequent love. God's love is a causeless love. You see, God loves us because that is what God is. God is love. It's not because of what we are. It's because of what he is. God is love. In the beginning of this psalm, David's looking back and he's thinking about the past. And there's a deliverance. There's a deliverance that love remembers. And in remembering God's delivering mercy, Davis tells us two things God did for him. Verses 1 and 2. First of all, he heard me. He hath heard my voice and my supplications because he hath inclined his ear unto me. You see, our God is a, a prayer hearing God. I want you to get this. This is lacking today. The Bible says, as oft as ye ask, shall be given. As oft as you seek, ye shall find. As oft as you knock, it shall be open. Now put them together. Ask, seek, knock. A for ask, S for seek, K for knock. It's all in the asking. And he's more willing to give than we are to ask. We have not because we ask not. But oh, I want you to see that. You see, Abraham prayed and God heard him. Moses prayed. We run through the Bible. God heard him. Elijah prayed. David here prays and God hears him. Friends, listen. If we pray, God will hear us. Get that in your heart. God hears every prayer we pray. He may not answer it the way we want, but God hears our prayers. But God not only heard him, verse 6 says, God helped him. <laughs> he not only heard him, but he helped him. Verse 6, I was brought low and he helped me. God not only heard him, but God helped him. You remember the priest and the Levite? You remember they heard the cry of the wounded man on, on the road to Jericho? Oh, they heard him, but they never helped him. The religious people of that day, they never helped him. They heard him. I love the Lord because he heard me. He helped me. Oh, how thankful David was. What a testimony. How grateful David was. There's three things stands out here. Three things David remembers. Three things that David looks back and he's remembering about. And the first one is his soul was delivered from tragedy. Verse 8. His soul was delivered from tragedy. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. God had intervened miraculously to extend David's life. I can't go into that tonight. I'd love to go into that. He did the same for Hezekiah. He extended his life by 15 years. He did the same here for David. How many times has he done it for us? Think about it. Think about it. I don't want to go in there tonight. One night when the riots, the, the, the troubles had only started, Lily and me is going to be a prayer meeting. We're in the van at the time. And a chap come along and say to me, he says, why didn't you go on? The lights, I says, the lights are red, son. Go on if you want. And he started to curse. And then he went on. And when he got just from here to that door, the whole van blew up. And my van turned round. The thing he had on his knees, the, the, the little cardboard box was a bomb. Blew him to pieces. God intervened. And we just forget that. Oh, friends, just think about it. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. T'was grace that brought us now this far, and grace will lead us home. I love the Lord, because God's salvation in Christ has delivered my soul from death. His soul was delivered from death, verse 8. Verse 8 again, his eyes were delivered from tears. You see, David had made many mistakes. I don't think there's anybody like David and Peter in the Bible. David made many mistakes. But then who amongst us haven't made mistakes? If the Lord was to mark iniquity, who would stand? Who hasn't made mistakes? Verse 11. I said in my haste, all men are liars. Most of us have spoken like that. We have been hurt in God's house. Some great calamity comes and in our haste we say something we should never have said. And we wish we could take it back, what we have said. David's so honest. He admits he had spoken in haste. 
And, and now he's grieved and to think about it. And, and he's so sorry and he, he's shedding tears. But now he's so thankful for God has forgiven him and wiped away his tears. Sometimes when we do things against people, they won't forgive us. But if we go in forgiveness and palm out our hand and want to be for, we can do no more than that. And God will forgive us then. Even the prayer says, Father, forgive us as we forgive them. And that's how much he forgives you as much as you forgive them. But David's so thankful, so thankful. His soul was delivered from tragedy. His eyes were delivered from tears. And then his feet, his feet was delivered, verse 8 again, from temptation. You look at verse 8. For thou hast delivered my soul from death and mine eyes from tears and my feet from falling. Now, brothers and sisters, listen. God established David. He, he delivered David from falling. I couldn't go into that because it would take too much time. But time and time again, the Lord delivered him. He, he gave David a, a firm foundation. He lifted David out of the Mary clay. He put his feet upon a rock. He put a new song in his mouth. I remember 50 years ago when I first got saved, Willie Mullen used to come and tutor me at night. He used to sit me for six months. And he used to say, write it down. When you get a thought, write it. And I wrote down. I read that and I wrote it down. He took him up, he sat him up, and then he tuned him up. Out of the mire and into the choir. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, friends. The deliverance that love remembers. Oh, friends. God commendeth his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, listen. We weren't even thinking about him, but he was thinking about us. I, I, I love the Lord because... What about you tonight? What about me tonight? Why do we love the Lord tonight? What has he delivered us from tonight? I, I can't go in, but my Lily and me, I, I can look back 50 years ago when he saved me. Only out of prison. In prison four times before that. Married to an alcoholic. And God saved me that night. Heard the gospels, the power of God. Never held another gun. Never done another robbery. I used to say when I was younger, when I was in six-cylinder job, I used to say from herring bone picking to roast beef and chicken. <laughs> from from beer and figs to ham and eggs. From a Johnny Walker to a gospel talker. From handcuffs to weight cuffs. Glory to God, friends. Oh, when you look back, my wish you'd be thankful. My wish you'd be thankful. All the deliverance that love remembers. The second part as I finish, I want you to see the determination love renders. The deliverance that love remembers but the determination that love renders verse 12 what what shall i render unto the lord for all his benefits towards me how can any one of us pay the lord back for all his benefits how could we ever pay him back think for instance just of one benefit i think about it often the bible what if we had no bible just think if we had no bible no word of god in this sinful world no light to guide our path no assurance of sins forgiven no hope for the future. Just think about that. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits? Oh, there's a determination that love Ram wants to render. David wants to pay this back. David remembers what he's done, and he wants to pay this back. Look at David's participation, verse 13. His participation, verse, I will take the cup of salvation. You're glad you're saved tonight. Was not a lo lovely thing our brother sung about being saved? And, and then he said to you, you're glad you're saved. Oh, friend, his ministry was so sweet tonight. It was so real tonight. I love reality. David said, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Do you know what Paul says? Paul says, and I think it's Hebrews 2, I think it's verse 3. Paul says it's a so great salvation. You know, I think it's great because of the person. They shall call his name Jesus. And he shall save his people from their sins. I, I, I think it's great because of the price. It's precious blood. I think it's great because of the pardon. He put our sins as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered against us anymore. Christians forgive you, but they don't forget. No, but God forgives and he forgets. I think it's great because of the person, the price, the pardon. I think it's great because of the prospect with the Lord forever when the storms pass by. Oh, David's participation, verse 13 David's proclamation, verse 4. Watch this carefully. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. My brothers and sisters in this little mission hall tonight, let, let us pity those people. Let us pity them who are shooting at a deaf heaven. There's people tonight, thousands of people, shooting at a deaf heaven. 
the names of so-called saints. You think about this tonight, friends. It's not the name of Merak. It's not the name of Buddha. It's not the name of Muhammad. It's not the name of Confucius. I've went into all them religions. I've studied them all. Friends, these are names of bankrupt sinners. No matter how great their reputation on earth among men, these great men cannot move the heart nor the hand of God. Paul says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. David's saying the same thing. Peter said the same thing. And I could run right through the Bible. Peter says there's no one or name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Oh, David's David going to proclaim to all and sundry. What a proclamation. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. If you're in this meeting tonight, a stranger to grace. If you're in this meeting tonight and you're not saved, you've only got to call upon the name of the Lord. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you see his participation? Can you see his proclamation? Look with me just for a moment. Time's running at his pathway. Look at his pathway. Verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Look at his pathway. You see, from now on, David was going to, no scheming any longer. No bluffing anybody else. From now on, David was going to walk before the Lord. This was a choice that was made by faith. Paul, Paul preaches and Paul says to the Corinthian church, we walk by faith, not by sight. And no matter what we want to do for the Lord, it's by faith. Friends, we could make no better choice. We could have no better company. You see, walking implies, I want you to see this. When you say you're going to walk with someone, walking implies company. Walking implies closeness. I want you to see this. Walking with God means he is by our sight. Every morning I open my eyes. I say, Lord, thank you for opening my eyes. Lead me to somebody today. Cover me with your blood. Oh, friends, hand in hand we walk each day. Hand in hand along the way. Walking thus we cannot stray. Hand in hand with Jesus. Friends, walking with God not only implies choice of company, choice of closeness. It implies choice of counsel, choice of control. Would you see this? You see, anyone who walks with God has no argument with God. In fact, they're in full agreement with God. Now, I can't go. Listen to Amos the prophet. I think it's chapter 3 of Amos. Amos says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So when you're walking with some, you're agreeing with them. Walking with God implies choice. It's by faith. Company, closeness, counsel, control. You see, there's progress. The steps of a good man are ordered. They're ordered by the Lord. His walk, verse 9, I will walk before the Lord. Walking with the Lord has earthly as well as eternal benefits. Now watch, this is very important for you to take this up tonight. Looking back in my life after 50 years, there's not a day Lily and me do it and at night we get down. And we don't look around the wee place where we live in the Lady Road. We know every door and we pray for everyone. I think there's only two, maybe three people saved in the whole road. And we pray for them individually, everyone. And we pray when we're going out to church on Sunday, they'll see our dress. They'll see us getting, because they're doing everything else. They're painting or doing anything else. But friends, when we walk, I believe in my heart, when you walk, there's earthly and there's eternal benefits if we walk with God. You remember Enoch? It said, Enoch walked with God. Now I want you to get this. It's Genesis chapter 5, you'll read it in there. It said, Enoch walked with God. I can't go into that, but could I tell you this? In Enoch's day, there was surrounding gloom. Keep that in your mind. I would love to go into that. Just like today, there was surrounding gloom. Did you know today that there's 40 million, 40 million with AIDS in the world today? Did you know that 3 million died last year with AIDS? Did you know that there's 60,000 people in Great Britain have AIDS? If you go by the flesh, friend, you'll die with the flesh. Oh, my friends. And Enoch's day, there was surrounding gloom. But I'm glad of this. In the midst of all surrounding gloom, there was saving grace. God saved him at 60 years of age, 65 years of age. And he walked with God for 300 years. That gives me a bit of heart in the night, Lily. Walked for 300 years. Surrounding gloom, <coughs> saving grace. You see, where sin abounds, grace abounds the more. But in this surrounding gloom and, and saving grace, and this, especially this surrounding gloom, it says that there was simple godliness. He walked with God. In fact, he had a wonderful testimony. The testimony says this before God took him. He pleased God. 
That's what the Bible says. He pleased. You know, you know the, the Lord opened heaven twice. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He had the same testimony as the Lord Jesus. Surrounding gloom, saving grace, simple godliness, and then sudden glory. He went out for a walk one day and he didn't come back. I'll say something to you in the way we were sitting here. There were 55 years, 55 years married. 54, 55 January, right? But I was up studying for a, a message. And when I come down, it was about Enoch, a gospel message. And when I come down, she, she said, what's keeping you? Four, you're over four hours up there. So I put it all to the one side, I come down. I have to get messages. The place of the clothes said. So I come down and I said, Lily, you see if you keep shooting at me the way you're doing, I'll do what Enoch done. And she says, what did Enoch do? I says, he went out and he never come back. <laughs> and better still, I looked for him and I couldn't find him. That's only for fun. But Enoch walked with God. And I could run right through the Bible. Noah, Noah walked with God. And, and before the great flood came, before that get to, the Lord destroyed the, the earth, perished, before that came, the Lord preserved them, took them away, lifted them out of it before the judgment came. Friends, there's great rewards for those who will walk with God. Now, let me finish. The deliverance love remembers. The determination love renders. His participation. His proclamation, calling upon the Lord. His pathway, walking with the Lord. Now look at his payment as we finish. His payment. I think it's verse 14. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of his people. Watch the verse. David had made up his mind. David was determined to give an immediate demonstration. Look at the word now. He's not going to wait for a more convenient time, a less embarrassing time. But now. But now. I often think, and maybe it's me, the way we go to the breaking of bread every Sunday morning, and we ha in, our, in our church in the breaking of bread, there's a time that you can worship the Lord, left open for the worship of the Lord. Thank God for that. And people sit like dummies. They sit like dummies. They're having a thing to thank the Lord for. No wonder the Lord says, were there not ten lepers? Where's the other nine? Only one out of ten come back. And only one out of ten of all those people that receive God's bountiful blessings ever come back with gratitude. But oh, friends, David, there's a deliverance love remembers. He heard me. He helped me. There's this determination love renders. David was going to pay his vows. David was going to show his gratitude. Now, how was he going to do it? By his witness. By his walk. By his word. He was going to proclaim by his worship. Surely, friends, as I close, surely, surely, brothers and sisters, we ought to live a life of continual praise and thanksgiving for all his bountiful blessings. Praise him for answered prayer. Praise him for daily guidance. Praise him for miraculous deliverances. Praise him for the sweet fellowship of God's people. Praise him for the day he saved us and called us to serve him. Praise him for the indwelling spirit. Praise him for the blessed hope of the Lord's return. He's coming back. Oh, praise him for victory over the devil, over death, over sin, over the devil. I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he first loved me. What about our witness? Be honest with me. Don't worry about me. God sees the heart. Man looks in the outward appearance. Be honest with me. What about our witness? What about our walk? What about our worship? What about our love for God's word? Are we really thankful? May the Lord bless his word. Father, bless your word to all our hearts. Help us, Lord, to witness for thee and work for thee. Help us, Lord, to have grateful hearts. Oh, God, if there's one here tonight that is not right with thee, help them to surrender to thee, to render to thee, to come back to thee. And you lift them, Lord, you'll hear their cry. Thank you for our young brother who so ably sung. Thank you for love, his lovely ministry and song. Lord, we ask, too, that when this service is over, that those that want to stay will say for a wee cup of tea. Bless the wounds, the hands has provided it. Bless it to our bodies. We ask it for Christ's sake. Amen. In a little town called Bethlehem So many years ago They told him there was no room in the inn but they had no way of knowing 
they had turned away the lamb of god would take away their sin i'm glad i know who jesus is i'm glad i know who jesus is he's more than just story he is the king of glory i'm glad i know who jesus is so many people still today don't know who jesus is they never felt his peace within their soul But I want my life to show them How his love can set them free He's the only one who can cleanse and make them whole I'm glad I know who Jesus is I'm glad I know who Jesus is He's more than just a story He is the King of glory I'm glad I know who Jesus is He's the Alpha and Omega The beginning and the He's the counselor, deliverer to me. He's the everlasting Father. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know. Who Jesus is I'm glad I know Who Jesus is He's more than just a story He is the King of glory I'm glad I know Who Jesus is Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with new videos as they come online.